the offenders in this unit are locked down for 23 hours a day. And when they're allowed out for their 60 minute break, they're kept apart in individual steel cages. One of the men is 38 year old Ronald L. Sanford. By any measure, and in any prison community, his is an exceptional story. When did, when did you come here to Indiana State Prison? Oh, well, I came here in 1989 at the age of 15 years old. Uh, I was actually convicted of the crime that I'm here for at the age of 13 years old. Um, so, And what was the crime? Double homicide. So I committed a double homicide at the age of 13 years old. At the age of 15, my case had ran its uh, course through the court, and I was sitting here to this prison in 1989. A double homicide yes, sir. at the age of 13? 13. 13, yes, sir. That's very, very young. It's tragic, uh, to say the least, and it is very young, absolutely. It's, um, it's unheard of, you know? Um, <laughs> wow. It's unspeakable, to say the least, uh, even reflecting on it almost 25 years later. Uh, in August, it'll be 25 years since that crime took place. It's, uh, it's still very vivid, it's still very poignant, it still resonates, and it still has the same amount of uh, tragic elements involved in it now as it did then. And it will always be with me for the rest of my life. I always say it's like an albatross around my neck. No matter where I, what I, where I go or what I do for the rest of my life, it'll always be with me. What were the circumstances which led up to the incident which led you in prison at the age of 15? Uh, me and a friend had basically uh, planned to get money to go to a fair. And to do so, we we're going to cut grass. And we went to a home, basically, and they said they didn't want their grass cut. And rather than continue on the vein and go to the next home, we decided to push into the home, essentially. And it ended in a double homicide. It's that simple. And uh, for our complicity in that crime, I was sentenced to 170 years, 170. You got a sentence of 170 years. Yes, sir. However you cut that, you are not going to get out of here. I'm eligible for parole when I turn 100 years old. Have you ever thought about all the things that you have missed that other 15-year-olds go through as part of their normal lives? Absolutely. I've never been to the prom, I've never driven a car, I've never had a driver's license, I've never filed tax returns, uh, uh, <laughs> I've never been on an airplane, I've never traveled abroad. <laughs> Should I continue? My life has been living in this prison, and it seems as though I've been in this prison so long that I've never been free. Uh, 25 years in prison, you know, <laughs> it's a long time. Especially when you come in at the age of 15. Yeah, really. Ariel, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for taking the time. I appreciate you. My first meeting with Sanford was a shock. But there were more disturbing cases at Indiana State Prison. I went back to the administrative segregation unit to see Ronald L. Sanford again. His story haunted me, a killer when he'd barely entered his teens. R.L., hi. How are you doing? I'm all right, sir. Good. How do you get accustomed to life in this environment? It takes some getting used to. Uh, it's tough. There was a young man on the range, a very young man, maybe 19, 20 years old. He's, um, 
exhibiting psychosis, and they took him to see the, psych the psychologist because uh, he's having trouble adapting. And this is an abnormal environment for a human being, certainly. You know, these are essentially cages, and to think that we stay in them 24 hours, 23 hours a day, come out for an hour a day, uh, it's, it's taxing. May I have a look in your cell about... Absolutely. Have a, have a look at some of the books? Absolutely. You, 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 you absolutely may. So, yes, Lieutenant, would you mind opening up? I'd just like to have a look. Yes, sir. You can, you can take whatever down you want to take down. And war against the weak, what the, what, what's that about? Eugenics. Eugenics? Yes, sir. America's attempt to make a master race, essentially. And, and, and this one is the Tree of Life. What that's about? Yes, uh, it's Kabbalah, actually. It's, it was more uh, uh, metaphysics, essentially. Those, those deep questions about man, where he comes from, where we're going, and who we are, essentially, yes. I see that you have, in addition to your books, you have some of your own writing on the walls here. Strength, well-being, and health. Yes. Just something I try to focus on. Um, if, if there's anything I, I, I want to stay my mind on, it's, as I always say, it's something progressive. So being strong and having a, a, a good disposition and being in good health are certain, certain things I definitely want to uh, focus on. And you have written here, no, no man is your enemy, no man is your friend, every, every man, man is, is your teacher. teacher. Yes, sir. I'm also standing here, and I think the, these are the parameters of your of your existence. Existence, absolutely. These four walls. It's a pretty yeah. isolating place. It really is, if you see it as such. It's isolated only to the extent that you, you, you think it is. You know, I mean, those books allow for a great escape and for uh, to be able to leave the, the confines of the wall, so. But I'm only in here for a few minutes and I, I feel it as such. I feel it, I feel the isolation. Everybody in this building feels the 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 the, um, the confinement that we're suffering uh, here. You know, you don't you put an animal in a cage for too great of a length of a time, it goes crazy. You know, how much more so humans? You know, so. This is what Sanford looked like when he came here at the tender age of 15. His murder of two elderly women in 1987 netted him the meager sum of five dollars. On that vile act, he must reflect for the rest of his life.